Okay, secondly, they were continually devoted to fellowship. Fellowship. Let's get a, a definition of fellowship. If I were to ask you what fellowship is, you might say, well, isn't that what you guys do when you have coffee and donuts after church and you, you sit around and you socialize together? Fellowship is not socializing, although that's what we think it is. The root meaning of the word fellowship is to have in common. To have in common. So if you are sharing with each other about the spiritual things that you have in common, that is fellowship. That's one form of fellowship. But notice in our text, verse 44 and 45, notice what they had in common. And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. How did the early church fellowship with each other? They said, this, this guy doesn't have any place to live. I've got two homes. Well, hey, I'll just sell one of them. And then I'll give him some money so that he can have a place to live. I mean, you say, man, that's radical, Brian. Well, that's New Testament Christianity. It seems radical to us because we don't obey it. <laughs> we, we don't live this way. God's calling us to a deeper kind of Christian living as a church. He's calling us to love each other just like Christ loved us. Remember the sermon to, I think it was two Sundays ago, um, where Jesus says, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another even as I have loved you. And we said that means that we are to love each other sacrificially. We're to love each other fervently. We're supposed to love each other like Jesus loved us, which is mean he put our needs ahead of his own comfort. And he laid down his life for the church. And so we are to love each other in the church just like that. And so let's say somebody here finds themselves without a job and they just can't make their rent. Maybe it's going to mean that we as a church come together and say, hey, brother, I've got a couple hundred dollars I can help you with this month. And another brother says the same thing. And before you know it, his rent's paid for that month. Uh, if we find someone that needs a car and has nobody, no money to buy them, maybe it means that we're going to go and take up a special offering and give them money to buy a vehicle. You see, it's going to mean that we care for each other and we look out for each other. That's really having all things in common. That's having fellowship with each other. And in addition to that, it means that when we gather, we do share the things of Christ in common. We speak about the things of Christ with each other. We find it really easy, don't we, that when we get together to speak about the weather and about the 49ers and about the new dress somebody's wearing. What, what we need to learn how to do is speak about Jesus and what we have in Christ to each other. So when we have the Lord's Supper together, let's be thinking, how can I, how can I talk to someone about what God has been doing in my life or what God has been doing in their life or a scripture I've been meditating on or a scripture I've been memorizing? or an evangelistic experience I've had, or maybe we'll get some guys together and make plans on how we can bring the gospel to a particular community. So that's, that's rich Christian fellowship right there. That's what we should be setting our sights on. <clears throat> Notice something else from the text. Verse 44. And all those who had believed were what? Together. Together. How often do you think those early Christians were together? Daily. 46 says, day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. You can find these Christians either at the temple or in homes every day of the week. They were, they were blown away. They were overwhelmed by what God had done for them and the newness of Jesus as their Messiah. And so they, they wanted to be with each other. They wanted to be with each other a lot. In fact, I think if we were to live out verse 42, a continual devotion to these four things, it's going to mean that we're committed to being together more than just Sunday morning. I'm sorry, folks, but that just isn't going to make it. Even though I hope we have a really wonderful fairly lengthy Sunday morning service here. We need to learn to live out our Christianity with each other throughout the week. So my recommendation, this is just my recommendation, is that we be firmly committed to Sunday mornings 
and then the women committed to their gathering, and the men committed to theirs. And then, if you can also make Wednesday evening, the equipping class, that would be just a wonderful diet, where we're seeing each other often. Wednesday night, we're going to make plans to do outreaches together, and then we're going to actually go out and do those outreaches. So it's going to require a day-by-day -day kind of lifestyle, rather than, oh, I'll see you next Sunday, see you next Sunday, where we don't really get into each other's lives, we don't really get to know each other that well. I, from what I read in this section, it seems like these early Christians knew each other, they loved each other, and they devoted themselves to each other.